Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. I um, hope you had a great trading week. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, the video is timestamped so you can skip to the pairs that you trade or you can watch the whole video um, and uh, learn some supply and demand um, potential trading opportunities coming up on all trading pairs. So um, we're gonna get straight into the technicals and the technical analysis. And we're gonna start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. Now the Dow Jones dollar index from last week came down to um, this, the top end of this demand zone here. And we don't necessarily trade the Dow Jones dollar index. We just look at um, this for overall dollar strength. And then we look for prices to come into, I say strength, but strength or weakness, depending on which way we want to trade. And then look for prices to come down into a demand or a supply zone. And then look for um, levels on dollar related uh, dollar crosses like the dollar yen, um, dollar Swiss, etc. And then see if we can find some um, shorting or buying opportunities in correlation with Dow Jones dollar index strength or weakness. So this week, or I should say last week, prices did come down into um, this zone right here, this demand zone. And then we had a bit of a reaction and we can see that we're reacting off of um, this supply zone here. We do have some fundamental data coming out this week. I think it's the FOMC um, statement should be on Wednesday. Let's have a quick look. So here we are, Wednesday 26th of September, FOMC. Um, federal funds rate and the forecast is for the dollar to increase interest rates from their current 2% to 2.25%. So um, that is usually positive for the dollar. And uh, what I'm expecting is probably some um, bit of a pullback as traders start to position themselves um, you know, to potentially buy the dollar doesn't mean that the dollar will go up and it's not a guarantee. Um, we do have the zero sum game in play, meaning that there are, you know, there is stop hunting going on. Um, and also, you know, depending on whether the uh, market has priced in the rate hike already, you can find out a bit more about how I uh, go about doing my fundamental analysis in the free fundamental analysis course. And the link is in the description box below. But getting back to the technicals, um, so pretty much I expect, you know, today being Monday, Tuesday up until Wednesday to be pretty much just some sideways movement, nothing much going on. And then Wednesday, potentially, obviously, some uh, some volatility. Um, so in a lead up to that, let's move up to the dollar yen and dollar yen. We're coming up into this supply zone. And again, we could see uh, this week, depending on the um, the reaction to the news, we could see either prices fall away or, you know, basically break through this area here. If you're looking for um, any kind of buy trades, actually, we do have an area of demand right here as well. So what you'd be doing is looking for any kind of potential pullbacks within this area here and you know this area here right or these areas if you're looking to be a buyer of the dollar and the dollar has been on a a bit of an uptrend over the past um you know three weeks or so coming to the end of september so um yeah we could see a, a reaction around here this is a decision point you know, is the market, you know, expecting a rate hike? And um, if they are, is this already, you know, priced in to the market as far as the exchange rate and the value of the dollar versus the pound, the yen, of, oh, sorry, the dollar versus the yen. Um, and the yen also being a risk currency as well. So if risk starts to come into the market, i.e. Uh, trade wars, etc., cetera, then um, we could see obviously a negative reaction or neg not necessarily negative, but, um, you know, prices start to pull back. Now, some of you may be obviously looking at this and saying, uh, supplying the more technical analysis basics, and I use this um, 
for some extra confluence uh, when entering trades. And I'm not gonna get into it on this currency pair, but I will get into and give you a trade example that happened last week, um, implementing the supply and demand order equation and really just go over um, you know, how I uh, enter trades or the levels that I look to enter on um, with the Euro pound, but for now, um, just looking at supply and demand levels and value, potential value. Um, these are the areas if you're looking to be a buyer, if you're looking to be a seller, then maybe start positioning yourself right now and then maybe stops potentially above the high. Moving on to the dollar Swiss and um, last week we did have a reaction to that demand zone. Um, but not much of a reaction, could have got a few pips out of it and now I've come down into this demand zone right here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just make another one. I'd like to have a few demand zones on here, All right? Um, and now we've reacted again with the um, FOMC statement coming out on Wednesday and with potential, um, I say potentially, but the Swiss National Bank um, saying recently that they think that their currency is too expensive or highly valued and they are ready to intervene um, which would make their currency their Swiss franc um, cheaper if they did intervene or they, their attempt to make it cheaper um, then this looks like a decent buy at this level right anywhere around here if you haven't got in already if you see some sort of pullback there's the interest rate hike as well as you know um, some diverging policies basically central bank policies then this would be a good technical and fundamental um, setup from a selling perspective you're looking to try and take advantage of the trend as they say as prices have been coming down um, what you would do is wait for price to come back up into here before looking to get short and that's purely obviously from a technical perspective so those are your options and again apply the supply and demand order equation if you know how if you don't know how again I'll be going over um, how to do that in the on the euro pound pair you can actually skip to that if you want to um, the uh, there is timestamps for the forex pairs in the description box below and then you can just come back to this currency pair so moving on to the um, dollar cad and the dollar cad has come down back down into this demand zone these two demand zones in fact I'm gonna get rid of this one here simply because we've touched um, this wider demand zone right here really pinged off that level this 129 level um, and now we're starting to obviously you know um, move higher so if you didn't get involved in this yet this could be potential entry on the daily or a lower time frame if you're looking for any shorts then we have this area right here so you'd be waiting for prices to come up to there. And right now would be a trade if you're looking for a pullback, maybe some sort of double bottom on the lower time frame. Um, this would be the area. But again, just keep in mind that we need a catalyst. What's going to be the catalyst for price movement and volatility? And I guess the traders will probably be waiting um, for um, you know the FOMC if you you know an option for traders is to kind of enter you know quarter positions or half positions of what they normally would and kind of scale in to the trade if you know they think that prices are gonna you know increase don't go all in before you know pre news going at you know quarter percent um, or quarter position and then look to scale in as prices start to go your way and if they you know after the news you can reassess whether you want to add into the position right again this isn't necessarily a buy I'm not recommending anyone buy or sell just yet um, but um, this is just a trade opportunity you know pre FOMC news um, and of course obviously prices could reverse and go you know the other direction depending on the expectation of um, interest rate hikes and how the market reacts to the uh, forward guidance of the Federal Reserve. Moving on to the 
New Zealand dollar, US dollar. All right, last week we did break through this um, supply zone, did react here, and then we uh, broke through, which just allows anybody who wants to be a buyer of the dollar to buy at a cheaper rate. So that'd be a demand zone, and what I'm gonna do is just gonna clean up um, this, this area right here. And we've got a demand zone right from here to here as well. All right, so there's your demand zones. If you're looking to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar, you'd have to wait for a pullback at the moment to any of these levels. If you're looking to be a buyer of the US dollar, then you're waiting for a move back up into this demand zone, sorry, a supply zone here or here before you look to get um, short and again apply apply the uh, supply and demand order equation at these levels for extra confluence uh, pound dollar so the pound dollar this week um, I was looking at this area here didn't manage to get in um, actually didn't trade this pair for the pound anyway um, and I did mention that I was probably gonna maybe stay out of this uh, currency uh, pair as far as the uh, the pound as there was a lot of volatility and um, you know the, the the pound could move in any direction based off of just pretty much comments um, and I'm going to show you why I entered on the euro pound later on as well um, uh, and kind of I wouldn't say changed my mind but um, had an opportunity to get in ahead of the market reacting to um, you know some uh, some negative uh, pound news so that broke and then we came up into here then there was the reaction um, regarding Theresa May's uh, speech the next uh, day after um, the European um, guys basically came out and said that you know the checkers deal is unworkable and uh, they're gonna have to come back Theresa's gonna have to come back with a, um, a better option or another option or a modified checkers deal so um, we got the reaction on the Friday, right? Which was this. Now, um, from a selling perspective, if you didn't get in, then you'd probably be waiting for prices to come back into this area before looking to get short, right? Or if prices create a lower low, right? Like this, then this will be your new supply zone. And then you'd be looking for prices to come back up to here before looking to get uh, short, right? And um, if you're looking to get long on this pair, there was, uh, there is a current level at the moment where it's reacting off of, right? If you can kind of pull this, actually I'd leave it there. Um, there is a reaction to this area here. This could be potential profit taking Right, and again, catalyst for the for this maybe potential move further down would be uh, the FOMC statement. There's a lot of uncertainty around the pound and Brexit, and you know deals coming up. So um, being long on on the pound from a fundamental position, um, or perspective, and sentiment, um, you know maybe might not be the smartest play in the world, especially when it comes to you know fundamentally the dollar. Um, being the strongest fundamentally everything's going great for the uh, pound apart from maybe some um, obviously some trade um, war news with China but fundamentally you know um, the dollar is sound so moving on to the pound yen <clears throat> and again with the pound uh, pairs we've just basically got reactions from um, you know Friday's um, press conference and you can start to see where prices have actually fallen away again if we're looking to be buyers so delete this supply zone if we're looking to be buyers of the pound you've got a current some demand zones right here all right and then if you're looking to be a seller you'll be waiting for prices to probably come back up into this area here before looking to get short so any of these levels to look for a buy opportunity again apply the supply and demand order equation don't just take any random uh, 
demand zone. Also do your fundamental and sentiment analysis when it comes to uh, what side you want to really, you know, be buying and selling and uh, understanding, you know, value, right? Moving on to the pound Swiss, and again, pound Swiss reacted off of this supply zone as we came up last week and pressed down into this lower area of this demand zone. So as we see, and we're seeing the reaction here, right? Again, if you want to be a buyer right now, now would probably be decent time as far as maybe a bit of a pullback before looking to get long. Um, again, this would be the area that you probably want to get short on, and I'm going to extend this supply zone up here. This is where I think, and this is where the strongest area of supply, you know, really came in to the market. Um, looking at the Euro dollar and Euro dollar is hanging around this area again, um, waiting for probably Wednesday, Wednesday's um, announcement to come out for looking at, um, you know any kind of movement so if you're looking down into an intraday time frame you could wait for price to kind of pull back up into a certain level before looking to get short again double top maybe some some, some sort of divergence or whatever you do trade um we've also created a demand zone right here so again if we do see a bit of a pullback and you want to be a buyer of the euro then this would be the first area this would be the second area you'd be looking to get long in um, looking at the euro yen the euro yen broke through these two supply levels and we've reacted on Friday looking at just some profit taking coming in here uh, pin bars are not um, a sign of a reversal just a potential reversal and to increase the really the chances of um, you know, uh, uh, that being a reversal, it's really, you know, helpful to look at what happened within that day, right? I've got a video on is a pin bar a reversal, you know, or profit taking, watch that video and I will, uh, and I go over my thoughts on pin bars being reversals, right? Um, so at the moment, we're seeing a bit of a push back up into this level. And again, if you think that the yen is gonna get stronger against the euro, that's, this is the area that you want to try and look for potential um, shorts and for a long position you've got a few demand zones, couple demand zones, first one being right here so you'd wait for you know, you pull back into this area here before looking for a long or any of these demand zones before looking for a long Moving on to the Euro Pound and the Euro Pound. So this is where I'm gonna show you the um, supply and demand order equation, right, and buy and sell orders. And really the, um, the premise behind this is to understand who else is gonna be buying at this level and um, trying to determine the imbalance in supply and demand, right? So why, the question we need to ask is why would there be more supply at this level right from an order perspective compared to demand right so from this is purely technical analysis right and so the first thing we want to do is look at horizontal support and resistance support and resistance pretty much is just supply and demand levels that have been projected into the future right and um so what we have is other traders are going to be looking at this level of resistance resistance support and then support here right so we're going to have traders who are going to be entering new trades right looking to buy here who's going to be selling right what what, what sell orders and what supply orders are going to be coming into this level after this move down right what selling pressure is there going to be from a technical perspective right most traders are probably looking to to buy within this area we know we're going to be buying simply because if you know um our fundamental bias and sentiment bias is towards the euro right being stronger than the pound then we've already made up our mind that we want to be a buyer within this demand zone so we need some help obviously from other traders looking to 
buy and sell within this area so the first one was horizontal support and resistance and also if you were a seller around here so if you've got short anywhere within these areas where are you looking to take profit at some area where you think there's going to be problems right and where other traders are going to be looking to potentially enter or exit right so if you sold up here then you're going to be exiting taking profit anywhere around here and take profit if you sell is a buy order right so you're going to be buying around here and buying orders a demand we also have um horizontal support and resistance the traders will be joining or looking for potential trend lines and if prices have been going higher and then looking at projecting into the future trend lines from these higher lows we also have diagonal support and resistance traders who trade trends are looking to do what buy around here right looking for some price action and looking to buy around here and then we also have something I call dynamic support and resistance which are moving averages and what you had around here was the 100 and 200 EMAs and SMAs right and uh, traders will use moving averages to you know to really kind of tell them the direction that they need to trade i don't use moving averages to tell me the direction you know so for example if prices above a moving major moving averages then traders will be looking to go long and if you know prices below a moving average so moving averages traders will look to go short what i use and it's really the only indicator that i do um use um in as confluence from a supply and demand perspective is a, is a moving average because i know that um uh, uh, you know, institutional traders will look at moving average bounces and uh, first touches to try and get long on um, whenever price does come down and touch uh, these uh, moving averages, especially after prices have moved uh, straight up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, probably around Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to um, release part of the supply and demand course, which talks about the supply and demand order equation in a bit more detail. And you can go over that. So I'll really be releasing that soon. So um, keep an eye out for that. Um, so you had a cluster of reasons to be long on this trade, right? Why demand should be stronger. And again, this is just from a technical perspective than you know, supply, right? Where we should have more demand orders than supply. And then what we had was on the Thursday evening, I actually saw that um, uh, the, uh, I think the European um, Commission or whoever it was, there was a news article that pretty much said that the uh, the checkers deal that Theresa May and, and, and the UK government is bringing is um, really insufficient and not great. So when I saw that, on the Thursday, and I saw prices were down here. I thought, you know what? Let's take a, a trade here. Saw a technical setup as well, right? On the lower time frame chart. And then, great trade to the upside when Theresa May came out um, with a press conference. Again, this could have went to the downside. We're only dealing with probabilities, but from a technical perspective, um, this was pretty much everything had lined up and this is a trade that um, it's it's worth taking even if you enter at a you know a half position or a smaller position than normal. Again, all we're doing is just speculating and looking at the probabilities of a successful trade going in our direction. And once prices started you know moving higher and stuff like that, it's just um, you know deciding when where and when you want to potentially take profit. So um, from a technical perspective, the stars pretty much aligned right within this area right doesn't align all the time um, um, and uh, but when it does align then um, it's a trade worth taking and only again if you believe that the euro from a fundamental sentiment perspective is going to get stronger than the pound right um, so looking at this from a supply point of view uh, here's your supply zones Right, you've got one here, and you've also got one here as well. Oh, sorry. One here. 
right? So if you're looking to potentially uh, take some profit off of, you know, I think prices are gonna go higher, right? And looking at profit taking, then this is the area you'd be looking for. If you're looking for actual reversal and uh, some negative sentiment towards the euro and some positive towards the pound and prices are in here, and you see a trade set up, then look to get short. If you're looking to get long, prices will really have to kind of come back into this demand zone before looking to get long, or prices will have to create a demand zone. So let's say, for example, this day ends up as a negative day, and then we create a higher high, then this becomes a area of demand, and then you'd be looking for, again, a pullback into this area before looking to get long. Um, moving on to the Euro Swiss, let's get rid of this, All right? So here, from last week, we did have resistance, resistance, resistance. Now, this has been touched various times. I expect this to break at some point, and especially with the Swiss franc um, potentially becoming weaker, right? Um, so if you do wanna get short, just be aware that this has touched several times right so um, if you do want to still get get short and uh, again traders believing that the trend is their friend um, then I would probably suggest and I'm not a financial advisor but uh, maybe just entering at a you know uh, a less position a half or court position right because um, uh, I don't have faith in you know this level anyway um, Simple, just from a technical perspective and you can do your back testing but you will know this to be true that the more a level is touched the weaker it does become right so um we also have a bit of a demand zone not the strongest demand zone in the world as far as um from a technical perspective in the way that i trade um strong areas of supply and demand but i am willing to get in if prices do come down here from a demand perspective um and again, this is mainly on a um, a fundamental and sentiment play rather than technicals. Um, so those are your options from the Euro Swiss franc, Euro Aussie. Um, again, from last week, we had marked out this area and then prices have reacted to both this higher demand zone here sorry, higher supply zone here. And then we've reacted here um, down into this uh, demand zone and prices are you know, making potential higher highs right in this demand zone. So if you do want to be a seller, then this is gonna be the first area, looking to be a buyer, pretty wait for prices to come back down into this area before looking to get long. Um, Aussie, Dollar. So again, last week we, uh, uh, the week before, matter of fact, we did have this negative candle or bearish candle, positive obviously for the US dollar, but prices have um, come back up and broke through. So this now becomes a demand zone. And if you are looking to be a buyer of the Australian dollar, then you'd be waiting for prices to come back down and look for a long. If you're looking for a short trade, again, we always look for price to come back into <clears throat> a supply zone or create a supply zone before looking to get short. I'm not trying to pick the top of the market um, at all. Um, stick to my technical principles. Um, and then, um, you know, so if I'm looking to get short on the uh, uh, Australian dollar versus the US dollar, then I'll be waiting for prices to actually come back up into this zone before looking to get short and less prices create lower highs and lower lows and therefore creating a level of potential supply, right, at this area. And then I'll be looking to get short within this daily supply zone. And lastly, for the Aussie yen, we have um, delete this area here. We come up into this supply zone right here. There was some bullish price action. Uh, probably risk being 
bit off or the market not really caring about the risk at the moment so some positive Australian news as well from last week and we've come up into this supply zone here so we've reacted and again if you think that the Australian dollar is going to get weak or the, uh, the um, new uh, my brain's gone a bit the Japanese yen is going to get um, stronger then you'd be looking for sell opportunities if you think that the Australian dollar is going to get stronger than you'd be looking for buy opportunities and again just apply the um, supply and demand order equation within this uh, this supply zone if you're looking to get short and vice versa if you're looking to get long so um, there's your weekly analysis for supply and demand zones if you do have any questions just email me at info at trading180.com or leave a comment in the section uh, box below um, Again, hope you have a great trading week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And um, take care, guys. Until the next video. So if you'd like to receive the best supply and demand Forex levels absolutely free, click on the link in the description box below, enter your email address, and we'll send you the levels that we have just analyzed in this video. You'll get all of the major Forex currency pairs, and you'll get regular updates and never miss a Forex trading opportunity.